All right, let us pray. Uh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and your kindness as we gather here um, to finish the second half of our lesson study, the Bible, uh, your love letter to humanity. I pray that you be with us and those that are beyond the way and that they will be watching afterwards. Help us to understand the beauty of this subject, but more important than that, help us to see your love in it for us, that we might be changed is my request. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. so we, uh, what do you call that? We left off. Um, this is the last question that we did um, or that we were on. How much of the Bible is inspired by God? So let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, a very, very familiar Bible passage. But let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 17, okay? All right. Okay. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask for some volunteer readers, and if you don't want to read, just tell me pass, and they will. I'll, I'll go to the next individual on the. Uh, on the screen. So I'll start with you, Thalia, since you're my first. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you could read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 for us, please. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I want you to notice verse 16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So the, the answer to the question, how much of the Bible is inspired by God? Your answer should be all. Yes, yes, yes. And we cannot pick and choose when it comes to the Bible. Um, we cannot just say, well, I prefer the Old Testament or I prefer the New Testament. It's You have to take all of it. You know, just like how God gave all of his son. That's how much of the Bible we have to take. We have to take all. And so it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What's interesting about that phrase, inspiration of God, it refers to God breathing. Okay. And when you look at the book of Genesis, the first time that God breathed that's recorded is when God breathed the breath of life into Adam. You remember the story? Mm. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and Adam became a living person. And just as the breathing of God gave life to Adam, the breathing of God in the scriptures gives life to the individual. Mm. And I want you to notice how the scripture helps us, helps us to, to, uh, to, to have life in ourselves. And notice what it says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Now, the word profitable means something that is to your advantage, something that can help you. Notice how... The scriptures, notice how the Bible can help an individual. It says, and it's profitable for doctrine. And that word doctrine means um, teaching or learning. And that's the thing about the, the Bible. God wants us to learn about him. And so mm. uh, one of the ways that we can learn about God is through the Bible. Uh, you can also learn about God through nature or his creation. Um, but there is no other testimony on God's green earth that describes God better than the word. Mm. Uh, what do you call that? that? That our mind can grasp, our human limited mind can grasp and understand the infinite. It is through his word. And so it says the the Bible, the scriptures is, is advantageous, is helpful uh, for teaching, um, for learning. It's also helpful for reproof. 
Uh, the word reproof means a conviction. Knowing something you know that is right. Uh, it is um, a word that's connected where, where you know right from wrong and you're convinced what is mm -hmm. right and what is wrong. And so the scriptures not only help to teach us, not only helps us to learn, but it, 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 it convicts us. And then it says for correction. And the word correction means a, to restore someone um, that is right in the eyes of God. That's what that word correction means. And so when mankind had sinned and drifted far from God, where uh, he is no longer right in the eyes of God, the Bible, the scriptures, helps to bring him back where he is in a right relationship with God Almighty. And then mm. it's for instruction in righteousness. Now that word righteousness, you look at the root word for righteousness, is the word right. And righteousness simply means right thinking, right speaking, um, right feelings, um, right behavior in the eyes of God. Mm. And notice the reason in verse 17 that um, that the scriptures were given for, for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and righteousness. That the man of God, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, or complete, are thoroughly furnished or equipped unto all good works. You see, the Bible was given for us to learn so that we can have a, a, a right state with God. And not only that, but it helps us to do good for others. Good work. Mm. Good work. So it's, it's not just a book for you to read um, and, and to say, oh, that's a, that, that was a nice reading. No, 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 no. The Bible was meant that you read, you apply, and then it affects not only your life, but it affects the lives of those that you around you. Yeah. And so how much Amen. of the people is inspired by God? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. That should be your answer. Uh, let's look at who helped, who helped to inspire prophecy. All right. Uh, question number six. Who helped the holy men of God inspire prophecy? prophecies and so we see that the bible was inspired by god all of it not just some of it or or part of it all the bible was inspired by god and it was uh, given so that we can be uh perfect and and uh thoroughly furnished unto all good works i want you to notice who helped the holy men to inspire prophecy all right so let's go to second peter chapter one Second Peter chapter one verse twenty and twenty one. Uh, since I got you there, Henry, next on the screen, can you read that for us, please? <laughs> Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretations, for the prophecy came not in the old time by will, by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, the word prophecy simply means the prediction of future events, especially the things that, that, that were pertaining to God and his kingdom um, and the Messiah. Um, that's what prophecy, um, that's what that word prophecy means. I want you to notice, the individual that helped the holy men of God, that, that inspired these holy men of God to, to write and record prophecy was none other than the Holy Ghost. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost helped the holy men of God write, record prophecy. And the key is holy men. That's the key. Holy men of God were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Ghost. You, you, you had to have a life that was uh, holy in the eyes of God. It wasn't just an ordinary individual. It was it was an individual that had been touched, anointed, and blessed by God. That God will reveal to these individuals prophecy concerning the kingdom, concerning his people, and the future blessing that God promised concerning prophecy. Does that make sense? 
All right. Yep. So the Holy Ghost helped the holy men of God to inspire prophecy. Um, uh, let's, what do you call that? Let's notice how the Holy Ghost helps us even further. Uh, let's go to John chapter 14. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 26. Uh, can you read that for us, Jamie, please? John chapter 14, verse 26. <clears throat> John 14, 26. Yes. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Now the... The Holy Ghost or the Comforter inspired the holy men of God to write and record Bible prophecy. The Holy Ghost is also the individual that authored the Bible. Mm -hmm. It was the Holy Ghost that inspired scriptures. And what's interesting about that is the Holy Ghost is not only the author, but he is the teacher. If you notice in the blue underlined word, it says, he, referring to the Holy Ghost, he shall teach you all things. Not only he's the teacher, but he's the one that reminds you and bring all things to your re remembrance. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, what do you call that? What One of the beautiful things that I've discovered is the Holy Ghost is the only author Amen. that you can call to your side to help explain what you are studying. 24-7, no matter how late it is, you can ask the Holy Ghost, please help me to understand this, and the Holy Ghost will come to your side. Because that's what the word comforter is. It means one who pleads another's cause. It is an aid or a helper or an assistant. And so as you open up the scriptures, the Holy Ghost is the only author that is Man. present to help you explain what he wrote. Ain't that beautiful? Man. And so the Holy Spirit teaches you all things concerning scriptures and then bring those things that you have studied to help, to, to, to help you remember the things that you've read. Now, here's the challenge. A lot of people don't remember what they read because they haven't read it. Mm. In order for the Holy Spirit to bring to your remembrance, you have to have read it. Amen. First, yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit cannot remind you of the story of Noah when you haven't read about Noah. You hmm. see what I'm saying? And so Amen. we study these, these, these stories about Moses and Joseph and and, and Isaac, the Holy Spirit will remind you the stories you've studied and then help you to go deeper in those stories. You can be studying the Sabbath school and and, and, and you're not even thinking about, you know, uh, about Joseph, but the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance and help you enhance what you are learning. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, let's look at how the Bible helps us, right? So we saw that it was the Holy Spirit that inspired the holy men of God to write prophecy. And that we've seen here in John 14 that it is the, the Holy Ghost or the Comforter. He teaches us the things of the Word and helps us to remember the things of the Word. Now let's look at the Word a little closer. How does God's Word help us? The same book, a couple chapters down, John chapter 17. We're going to look at verse 17. Uncle Ron, are you able to read that for us? John 17, 17? Yeah. Uh, Sanctify them through thy truth. The word is truth. This is a, a, a short passage, but a powerful passage. The word sanctify, sanctify it, it means to cleanse. Um, it means to, to purify. It means to set apart for God's holy use and holy purpose. Mm. The Amen. word of God, in other words, the word of God, when it says sanctify them to thy truth, thy word is truth. The truth of God sanctifies us. The truth of God cleanses us. The truth of God makes us holy. 
you you following that yes and the way the bible works is this you read the bible where it says uh thou shall not lie and then you apply it to yourself okay i'm, I'm not going to lie i'm not going to i'm going to tell the truth when you do that that is how you become holier and holier and holier still you mm. find it work that's Amen. how God makes people holy. It's by people reading the word, applying it to their lives, and then from the inside out, there is a change. Because the word sanctify means to purify or to cleanse from within, internally. Amen. Internally. It has to be from within. And the reason why it's from within, because that's where sin starts. From Amen. within. The mind, correct? The mind, the heart, yes. the feeling, all internal. So those things need to be cleansed. And once, uh, when those things happen, you can tell by the external. You can tell that the, that the Holy Spirit is working. The Holy Ghost is working to clean people's lives by the way they are living. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Very simple, right? And so that's how the Word of God helps us. When you apply what you read to your life, the word begins to clean you, sanctify you, and make you pure. Any questions so far? All right, all right. Moving along. How did Jesus approve the Old Testament scriptures? Now, let's look at this. We're going to look at Luke chapter 24. We're going to look at Luke chapter 24. How did Jesus approve the Old Testament scriptures? And at this time, in Luke chapter 24, Jesus has been put to death. And his, his followers are so discouraged because all their hopes and dreams were in Jesus Christ. And when Jesus died, all their hopes and dreams died along with him. But a miracle happened that Jesus rose from the dead. And he starts to appear to, to certain people. And... One of these instances was the was on the road to Emus or Emos, and there were two of his followers, and 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 they looked so discouraged. And 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 and, and, and notice what happened. Luke chapter twenty four. I'm going to read verse twenty seven. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded or explained. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And when Jesus appeared unto his two followers, his two disciples, he was trying to remind them that when he was alive with them, this is um, his death, um, his crucifixion, as well as his resurrection was all predicted in the scriptures. But... Uh, they had misunderstood um, his mission. And so Jesus is trying to explain to them um, his death was part of the scriptures. He was supposed to die, but mm. at the same time, he was supposed to resurrect. And that's what verse 27 is, is talking about. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, verse, skip on down to verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled or must be obeyed concerning the scriptures. Jesus had to fulfill or obey the scriptures. And then Amen. the highlighted words, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus says. He says, while I was still with you when I was alive, these are the things that needed to happen. And 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 he begins to, to, to explain to them the things that was written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms. You get that? Mm. Now, if you, if you take a look, let's look at the... Let's take a look at the, um, the Old Testament. Remember those three things that he said, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. 
Mm. Now let's look at the, the books of the Old Testament. The first five books is called the, the Pentateuch or the Law of Moses. It was written by Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those books are known as the Law of Moses. Let's look at the prophets. If you look at the prophets, it's divided in two divisions. There is the major prophets, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. And there are the minor prophets. You'll find it from Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Mm. And then the Psalms or the book of poetry. It's from Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. And then mm. from Joshua to Esther, those are the books of history. It's, it's God's people their their history when they entered into the promised land of Canaan. So when Jesus says the things that are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning him, you know what Jesus did? He gave them a thorough Bible study from mm. Genesis to Malachi about him, how he was prophesied to have come, to have lived, to have died, and to have resurrected for humanity. Amen. And so, how did Jesus approve the Old Testament scriptures? Well, verse 27. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Meaning, he gave them a Bible study about himself. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. In the Old Testament, the whole Bible. <laughs> beautiful, huh? Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Question number nine. What is Paul's advice concerning the scriptures? What does Paul say about the scriptures? Let's go to two, two places. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and then 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 and verse 12. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Thalia, can you read for us 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, please? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So Paul's advice is we need to study for ourselves. Uh, a lot of, there's a lot of Christians that depend on others to study for them. Mm. You know, uh, it's good to listen to sermons. Yeah, It's good to listen to Sabbath school lessons. But right. it's even better if you study it for study yourself. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And so Paul's advice to us is we need to study. Study God's word. And to rightfully divide it. To rightfully understand it. You, you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 and 12 uh let me read it for us first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 and 12 it says now all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition, admonition. Uh, the word admonition means a warning and an encouragement at the same time uh, what are these things that was written the things that happened to God's people when they left Egypt there's a lot of lessons to be learned about the people in the past when they came out of Egypt. There's a lot of warnings and there's a lot of encouragement. The warning mm. is don't do what they did when the curses fell upon them. And the encouragement is do what they did when God's blessings fell upon them. In other words, don't disobey as they did but learn to obey. Mm. And so, what do you call that? All these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. And so, all these things that happen to God's people in the past, we are to learn from them. And also, mm -hmm. 
it is an encouragement and a warning for us. You know, the warning is stay away from the things that they did that 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 caused the curse of God to fall upon them. And the encouragement is do the same things that they did that caused the blessing of God to fall upon them. All right. Now, All right. Let's, look at, let's look at how a person should study God's word. Let's look at how a person should study God's word. All right. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah. All right. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Okay. Brother Henry, can you read that for us, please? Uh, yeah. Verse 9 and then verse 10, please. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrines? Them that are weaned from the milk and drowned from the breast. All right. Stop it right there, Henry. Stop it right there. Here, Isaiah is giving an, an explanation. He's talking about who God will teach knowledge, who God will teach instructions, especially instructions concerning prophecy. This is the question. And the answer is this, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You know, when you wean a child um, from the breast. It means that the child no longer, um, what do you call that, is um, sucking on the mother's breast for food, but the child now can eat solid food. Mm -hmm. That's what it means uh, to be weaned from the milk, to be drawn from the breast. Those are the individuals that God will teach knowledge and understanding. You, you, you guys following that? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it it gives the analogy. It gives the comparison of of a child that that is drinking milk, and then now the child doesn't drink milk. All right. You guys, you guys get that. You see, uh, uh, even in this in in this week's lesson, it, uh, what do you call it? It it talks about the milk of the word. When we first come to God. When we first learn about the Bible, we like are like babies. Yes, yes, that's right, Uncle Ron. We are like babies, yeah? And just like babies that, that suck on a mother's uh, breast for breast. milk and for nourishment and for food, we study the word of God um, slowly but surely, right? And as the Holy Spirit begins to teach you and teach you and teach you, your, your understanding begins to grow and grow, sure. and grow. And sure. yes, yeah. yes, yes. And so, uh, what do you call that? That is uh, an example of how you grow from a little child um, to a, uh, what do you call it? To a man, I guess, yeah? Um, Paul says that when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, right? Uh, first Amen. Corinthians chapter 13. And so that's the example of um, a person that God will teach knowledge. It's, um, it's not a, God will teach someone that wants to learn, that, that is growing in different levels, not someone that just remain a baby. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, not someone just remaining a child. And let me tell you, friends, I've seen a lot of childs I've seen a lot of babies in the Adventist church 20, 30, 40 years. Amen. <laughs> Have mercy. Yes, yes, yes. And so uh, we need to pass the baby stage and move on to the grown-up stage. Yeah. Just like how you have Amen. different levels of learning in school. You have grade one, grade two, grade three, and then you graduate from high school. And then you go to college, correct? You get your Man. bachelor's, your master's, and you get your doctorate. Um, they're different levels. It's the same thing in the Word of God. You start off small, and you you grow, you grow, Man. you grow, you grow. It's the same thing. The and these are the types of individuals that that Isaiah is talking about. Who shall God teach knowledge? Who shall He make to understand doctrine? The answer is them that are weaned from the milk. 
and drawn from the breast. In other words, those that are 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 are, are moving up are 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 are, 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 are uh, what do you call that? Are not babies anymore, but they have matured. Yeah. Now, verse ten <laughs> answers the question: How should a person study God's word? There's some principles in here that helps us to understand. Verse 10, here's the first principle. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. precept. Now, the word precept means command. All right? Mm. So this is one way that you study the Bible. Command upon command. You got that? Mm -hmm. huh? and, so, and so you read in, you read about uh, you hear about a command, like say, uh, if God is talking about the command of marriage, then you look at all the Bible where God talks about the command of marriage to understand the subject marriage or whatever subject you're studying, right? Amen. That's how you study the Bible. Precept must be upon precept. Command must be upon command. And so what's, what's nice about the Bible is, um, there's, uh, God talks about subjects Throughout the Bible. It's not only found in one particular area of the Bible. It's, all, it's throughout the whole Bible. And so what you have to do is you have to look at where the commands are written or where the subject matter is written and then study it. Don't just take one part and run off with it and create your own new belief and your own independent church. No. Mm -hmm. You got to be smart about it. So this is how you study it. Precept must be upon precept, all right? And then it says, line upon line. line. Here's, here's another principle in how we study the Bible. The word line means a rule or a principle. And so when you're studying the Bible, you look at, what do you call that? The principles in the stories. And if you're studying the principle about righteousness, right, or forgiveness, and then you you find out where in the Bible where it talks about those things. And then you, you, you read around it. Read the chapters before it, the chapter after it, and the chapters concerning it. And then try mm. and draw a correct conclusion. You know, it's it's like an investigator. Yeah, you investigate all the, the evidence of, of what the evidence say about a certain subject that you're studying. You gather it and you ask God, God, help me to understand it. And then when you understand it, then you ask God, help me to explain it that a little child can know it. Amen. And so Amen. those are the two, those are the two uh ways to study the Bible. Precept Amen. must be upon precept, command must be on command, line upon line, a principle must be upon principle. And then it says, here a little and there a little. So uh what do you call it? Search the whole, search the whole Bible. Why? Because the Bible says all scriptures is inspired by God. Not just the mm. Old Testament, not just the New Testament. It's from the Genesis the to the Revelation. Thing. Yes, the no, whole man. Bible. Yes, yes, yes. So that is a safe way to study the Bible. Yes? Mm. And, and let me just add this. You know, we as Adventists, we are known as the people of the book. Amen. And let me tell you, I've, I've met some Seventh-day Adventists that are very knowledgeable of the Bible. They memorize it. They, they, they can uh, quote it. Even even Ellen White. But what's sad to me is they have not wisdom. They have all this knowledge, but they have not wisdom. Just because mm. you have all this knowledge, it doesn't mean you can bash what is right and use it to draw to draw others further from God. What I mean by that is. Just because you're right in the Bible, it doesn't mean that you can use it the wrong way. Mm, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, there is a time to defend the word. There is a time to defend the church. And what's interesting about that is you'd never find Jesus Christ in a debate mm. concerning right and wrong. He knew right. And obviously, the teachers was teaching falsehood. He would rebuke them. But you never see him in a debate, even though yeah. he knew truth. Right. Because, because Jesus' goal was much bigger, was to win 
people closer to the kingdom, even his enemies. And so while we have the right understanding of the word of God, we need wisdom. We don't have to always win the debate. Amen. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? At the end, at the end of our Bible study, it's not I'm right and you're wrong and, and your church is going to hell. No, 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 no. At the end of the study, ask yourself the question. Did I draw the person closer to God? Amen. Mm. Did I help yeah. him to see the love of God more? Right. That's when you won. That's when you won. Not 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 you you won because you're right and, and the person is 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 drawn further from God. Amen. And so with the knowledge that we have as a church, <clears throat> we need wisdom. Amen. Um, just because we know better, just because we know more, it doesn't give us an excuse to use it as a as as a bashing instrument and 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 to judge and to condemn others who don't know the truth about the Sabbath, who don't know mm. the truth about the state of the dead. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So 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 we need we need wisdom in presenting the gospel and that 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 it'll draw people closer to God, not further from God. All right. Okay. Amen. End it at that. I'll end it at that. All right. So, um, we should study the Bible, uh, precept upon precept, command upon command, um, line upon line, principle upon principle. Here a little, there a little. You know, uh, search the Bible throughout the entire uh Bible itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's look at what do you call that? Jeremiah chapter twenty nine. Yeah. How should a person study God's word? God's word? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, 12, and 13. Beautiful Bible passages. Um, Jamie, can you read that for us, please? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 through 13. She's there. Sorry. Oh, there can you, go. you read <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, 12, and 13 for us, please? Sorry, who's reading? You, you, Jamie. Oh, okay, okay. I couldn't hear it cut out. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And 12 is, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken your I will hearken unto you and 13 is and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart oh, amen. Amen. thank you Jamie. Amen. you see the you Bible is God's love letter to humanity it amen. is God who absolutely refuses to give up on fallen man even when they had given up on the Almighty God, and mm -hmm. and and here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, uh, states that we should search God with all our hearts. And you know, when mm -hmm. we search God with all our hearts, um, we will be rewarded. Uh, mm -hmm. Hebrews eleven verse six, the the chapter of faith. It it says uh, Hebrews chapter eleven verse six. Let me read it real quickly. It says. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who's him? God. And God. then it says the blue underlined word, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so when we make honest, good effort to search the Bible, uh, to read God's love letter for ourselves. I tell you, folks, God will reveal himself in such a way that it'll be a uh, nourishment. It'll be an encouragement. It'll be a guide, uh, not only for your life, but for those around you. Yeah. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, we're, I think we're at the last question. Oh, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. why did God write and preserve the Bible? What was God's reason for writing the Bible and preserving the Bible? Let's go to John chapter 20. 
Let's go to John chapter 20, uh, verse 30 and 31 first. Uh, Uncle Ron, can you read that for us? John chapter 20, sure. verse 30 and 31. Okay. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye may have life through his name. Ah, uh, thank you. You see, the, the whole reason why God wrote and preserved the Bible is so that we might still know God's love for humanity and that we might know about the blessed hope that God has to offer to humanity. Um, said hope is that even though mankind had sinned and the consequences deserves death, God extends life and forgiveness that humanity Amen. might live. What a beautiful, beautiful God. Uh, John, same book, few chapters previous, John chapter 17, verse 3, 4, and 5. Uh, let me read it for you. It says, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify Amen. thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. You know, when mankind fell from grace, the Godhead family, God the Father, <laughs> God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit did not sit idle and just watch from a distance and say, oh, poor thing. <laughs> no. They, they were so moved. They were so moved that the plan of <laughs> salvation went into effect. And the Son volunteered to lay down his life. And the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Spirit, to help draw men closer to God and with the Father, the loving Father, that extend mercy, forgiveness, and eternal life that mankind might live. The Godhead mm -hmm. family could have just sat and, and let, the, let whatever happened happen. Let the consequences fall. But they did not. And I'm, I'm so... I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that the Godhead family stepped in to help each and every one of us. Mm. Amen. So why did God write and preserve the Bible? That we might know about God and his love, his son, his family that's trying to help humanity so that humanity would not perish and die because the consequences of their sins. Now there's an other there's another individual in this great conflict between good and evil that's trying to do the opposite because while the godhead family is trying to save mankind there is another individual that's trying to destroy mankind and yeah. uh, and let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 5 and 6 All right. Uncle Ron, can you read verse 4 for us, please? Sure. In whom the God of this world, Satan, in parentheses, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Mm. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the faith of Jesus Christ. There is another mm -hmm. individual in this world who is trying to blind the minds of mankind that they would not believe the Godhead family and their offer of, of life and eternal life through the Son. And this individual right. is none other than Satan or the devil yep. himself. And, and while the devil is trying to blind people's eyes, God is trying to 
open people's eyes um, to what he has to offer. Now, we've studied the Bible, yeah? And um, there's many types of different versions out there of the Bible. And I have a, I want to show you guys something because not all Bibles are created the same. Hmm. Now, on your screen, I have two different versions. I have the King James Version and the New International Version. Hmm. I have same Bible verses. But I want you to notice the differences when you when you use a Bible to study. Uh, I just want to make you aware that not all Bibles are the same. And so when you use the Bibles to to enhance your study and your learning, you just need to be aware of that. OK. Um, Luke chapter nine, verse 56. I want you to notice how the King James reads it. It reads like this, for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now, the same Bible passage, um, let's read it in the New International Version. Luke chapter 9, verse 56, puts it like this. Then he and his disciples went to another village. You see how it's really different, the translation? Uh -huh. And so when you use a Bible to study... You need to be aware of the different translations. Not all translations are the same. Um, King James, Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. It says, for the son of man is come to save that which was lost. In the new international version, Matthew chapter 18, verse 11, it's not there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's missing. And so, you know, the devil, eh? The devil, when he saw Dang. that he couldn't kill Christianity... When he tried to persecute the early Christian church. And it it seemed like he was going to win. Where he was killing the Christians. But when he looked as he destroyed one, ten would rise in their place. He destroyed another one, another ten would stand up in their place. And mm. so and so he was like, the, the devil was like, man, what's going on? Oh, well. Then the devil went to plan B. You know what the plan B was? If I can't beat them, I'm going to join them. <laughs> mm. And so he joins the church and, and, and he puts out different translations of the Bible. Yeah. And so when you use a Bible translation, you just mm. need to be aware of the version that you're saying. Amen. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Um, the newer versions, they use a lot more of our modern day language. Yeah. And so a lot yeah. of people are comfortable with those versions. And, and it's, it's, it's okay to use modern day versions. Just be aware how these modern day versions dilute the meanings of the original intention of the manuscripts or the versions of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, you look yeah. at Luke 9.56 from the King James and you look at 9.56 on the New International Version. It's, it's totally different. Yeah? Totally yeah. different. Um, You get totally two different meanings from these passages. So I say that just to uh, make Amen. you aware not all Bible translations are the same. Amen. So be, Thank you. be cautious when you're using uh, different versions as you study the scriptures, okay? Amen. All right. And then last but not least, John chapter 8, verse 32. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. free. Yes, yes. Amen. Free, free from deception, <laughs> free from Amen. the lies. And free from the tactics and the traps of the enemy of souls, Satan himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So may God continue to guide and bless you in all your studies, especially studying the Bible. God's Amen. letter to you. Um, any comments? Um, any any additions? Um, anyone would like to add before we close us with a word of prayer? Not for me.
<laughs> my my Bible is the clear word Bible, uh -huh. but I believe it goes off King James Version. Oh, another good version is the uh, the NASB, the mm -hmm. National American yeah. Standard Bible. It's just like the King James, uh -huh. but it used modern words. Oh, I see. Instead of the thou didst hearken. <laughs> When um, yeah. yeah yeah when when I read one word that I wasn't sure of last study <laughs> when uh what do you call that when uh when I learned about the Bible I didn't know the King James was the hardest one <laughs> <laughs> and so and so when I started to read I I I used the King James version so I, I was always constantly trying to look I had to look up what these words meant um and but uh in doing that. I became better at it. And so um, for me, my preference is the King James. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know any better. If I had to start it all over, I would start with a more modern version. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, I started with the King James and and and, and uh it it has its its benefits too as well, you know. Um it, it has uh it is given me a lot of wisdom, a lot of insight, and uh it, it makes me appreciate um the scriptures when i read it yeah so all those uh all those times spent in researching um the uh the original words and all that stuff it, it comes into play when i'm when i'm teaching or when i'm preaching it, it comes in handy and the holy spirit reminds me remember you study remember you study oh yeah that's right that's right and then mm -hmm. you no know, uh not only i am blessed but the, the listeners that are listening they're blessed mm -hmm. so so I, I just wanted to make you guys aware that not all translations are the same and 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 just be careful uh the translation that you use. That's why uh word study uh protects you from all these different variations and translation. Man. Word study helps you. So if 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 you if you get into the habit of of doing a word study, man, no matter what version you read, you'll get it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh Man. next next the next uh, Thursday um we're going to really start picking up on our studies and what I mean by that is we're going to be studying the heart of 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 the Bible studies uh meaning that we're going to go into prophecy now. We've mm -hmm. we've looked at the foundation. I I believe I laid out a solid foundation for you guys. Uh but now we're going to go into Bible prophecy and start studying Daniel and the Revelation. So I'm excited uh, for you guys as as we pick up the study uh thank you guys for you guys um what do you call thank it thank you brother Kamala. and um you know wanting to learn more and more um about the um about the word and 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 and, and uh you know keep on keeping on folks you know um spend time with god five ten minutes and then you know let it grow uh let the holy spirit nurture you and then one day you'll be doing this to a friend or a colleague or a co-worker or, or even a family member. Yeah, family members. So at the end of uh, the Bible studies, um, my PowerPoints, my notes, that'll be all yours for the taking. Amen. Amen. That I have will be all yours and you can utilize it. You can edit it however you want, you know, take out, add in, however the Holy Spirit impresses you. Um, what do you call? It? Because I want I want to equip you to be better than me. Amen. And, yeah, and so that uh, God can use us uh, to help um, expand Perfect. and further the kingdom. All right. Amen. So with that being said, let us pray. Uh, we thank, thank you. you, Heavenly Father, for your love and your kindness. We thank you for the commitment of these these blessed blessed souls that wants to learn more and more about you, dear God. I pray that you will enhance their learning, equip their knowledge, grant them the wisdom that is necessary from heaven as you teach them, Holy Spirit. May they know the proper time to speak and the time to be silent. Help mm -hmm. them to plant the gospel seed deep within the hearts of those they come in contact with. And may your law of grace fall from their lips as they share with others. Please bless them, continue to be with their families and the families that represent, that they represent. This is my request in Jesus' name. Amen.
and amen. 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 Thank you, brother, so much. All right, family, you Thank guys you. have a, Thank a you, blessed, everyone. blessed evening. You guys have a blessed, blessed night. All right. Thank you, Zamolo. Okay. Uh, Good night, everybody. Good night. Uh, Good night. Love you all. Love you, love you folks. Good night. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay.